Hey everyone, it's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com. I'm at home in Bangkok, Thailand, but today Ying and I are on our way to fly to Osaka, Japan. We just planned this trip two days ago. I'm excited to go, but I'm gonna have a big lunch before we go to the airport. Okay, so here's what happened. I have a friend in Bangkok whose name is Dwight, at BKK Fatty. Uh, you might have seen him in a couple previous videos as well. A couple of months ago, he told me he and his fiance bought tickets. They got a good deal to buy tickets to fly to Osaka in Japan. And so he invited Ying and I to go. And at that time, I had no idea what my schedule was, so I couldn't really commit to go, uh, even though in the back of my head, I really wanted to go. We returned from the Philippines back to Bangkok a couple weeks ago, and I my camera, which I'm using right now, broke down while we were in the Philippines, so I had to take it to the Canon Repair Center, and I just got it back actually yesterday, so I'm happy to have my big camera back. Uh, but also, I had a commitment this week to do something here in Bangkok, so that was another reason we couldn't join them to go to Osaka. But that commitment fell through, and so we had a free schedule, and so I just decided to go online and do some quick searches for flights, uh, having real no intention that we were gonna go or not really thinking that we were gonna go. But to my delighted surprise, we, I found a ticket to, from Bangkok to Osaka, a really good deal on a flight. And so without doing any sort of thinking, I decided to book the flight. I'm, I'm really excited to be going to Osaka and also Dwight is already there. He left three days ago. So we're gonna meet up with Dwight and that is how we are on our way to Osaka. But before we go, I am gonna have a big lunch. My mother-in-law and Ying have grilled me a tilapia salt crusted and that is of course served with chili garlic sauce. And then over here, Ying made a, it's called yammaku yao which is grilled eggplant salad, and it's just roasted eggplant, then the skin is peeled, and then I think she put in, looks like minced pork. Uh, there are shallots in there, chilies, green onions, lime juice, and probably some fish sauce. That's my plate of rice, and then also this is called bala, which is fermented fish dipping sauce. And I think she just boiled up something, this is called gatin in Thai. And usually you can just kind of slit the, the back. This is a tilapia. Normally you can go in from the top here and just kind of go like that. Oh, look at that juice. Oh, can you see that juice that came out? Okay, and then you can just peel back the skin, revealing so all that salt crust protects the fish inside. Oh, oh, oh that's hot. <laughs> Oh, just look at that meaty flesh. And then all you have to do is take your spoon and just slide it to take off some of that. Oh, look how juicy that is. Oh. Okay. And then add, you cannot eat it without chili garlic sauce. And rice. The fish is so incredibly juicy and then all that flavor from the chili garlic sauce. It's sour, it's salty, that's awesome. Okay, and this one is the roasted eggplant salad, Thai style. Mm. The eggplant is soft, but not, not like goopy. And then it has a nice smoky flavor from being roasted on the fire. It has a little bit of saltiness, as well as sourness from lime juice. And then those shallots and chilies. I love it. And then finally, this in Thai is called gatin. And I can't remember the name in English right now, but I'll try to look it up and then post it here. But you can take some of these and you can dip it into the pala, which is the the fermented fish dipping chili sauce. And you can definitely smell that. <laughs> that has an aroma to it. Oh yeah.
the gatin. It's just a little bit blanched, so it's still kind of crisp. And then it has kind of a, a bitter chalkiness to it. This is lunch before we go to the airport, and we are flying a budget airline to Japan. And one thing you do not want to do is get onto a budget airline flight when you are hungry. I'm feeling a lot better about going to the airport after devouring that. Couple not coming. Ah. We're on our way to Dan Meung Airport now, and instead of taking a taxi, we Ying and I have been taking Uber X a lot. It's really convenient, and actually, it's almost the same price, if not sometimes cheaper than a normal taxi in Bangkok these days. Today, we got lucky with an upgrade, so we are uh, have a really nice car. So we are riding to the airport now in style. It looks like we're in for some rainy weather in Osaka. Rainy almost every day. We just arrived at Dan Meung Airport. That took about an hour, and I had a nice little nap on the way. But we're at the airport now. It looks pretty busy, and we are flying with Air Asia. All right, we are getting checked in now to our flight. Our bag is 12 and a half kilos today. We got all checked in and through customs and now sitting waiting for our flight. I have about an hour, so I'm gonna get a little bit of work done. We got a seat, luckily, with a power outlet. Right, right as we were about to board, they just changed our gate on us. So we gotta walk what seems like across the airport to a different gate. We are loaded into the airplane and about to leave. And it looks like the airplane is not too full, so quite a few empty seats, but pretty comfortable plane. We just landed in Osaka. The flight took right at five and a half hours, and it's just after 11 p.m. in Osaka now. Thank you. Thank you. just got through customs and immigration and we grabbed our bag and we are out here now and gonna try to catch a bus into Osaka okay I gotta buy a bus ticket English okay good English All clear informations will be displayed in English. to Osaka station 1550 yen per person two people We came outside to catch the bus. We are at bus station number five, which will take us to Osaka station. But we had, we got in line and I realized I had no money. So I had to run all the way to the other side of the airport, find an ATM, uh, take money out, and then come back here to the vending machine. They have ticket vending machines for the bus. So you have to get your bus ticket. We just got onto the bus and the bus is full so we had to take the center fold-out seats but this should just take a little less than an hour to get to Osaka station. That took about 45 minutes and it's raining in Osaka and we are walking over to, it's called the New Hank Yu Hotel, which we're gonna meet Dwight there. So yeah, it's raining pretty hard actually. We met up with Dwight and Panisha, and it really started downpouring. You can see my hair is all wet, uh, but the only logical thing to do, even though it's 2 a.m. right now, or is it, it's like 1.30, is to go and eat. We made it to this street, kind of like an alley of restaurants and bars and it is 2 a.m. or almost like maybe 2.30 a.m. on a Wednesday night, so a lot of stuff is closed, but there are a couple spots open. We don't have very many choices, so we're just gonna stop at this place, which is one of the only open places for a quick bedtime meal. 
Oh. Is that chicken? I think we got some raw chicken without knowing it. Oh yes. <laughs> we came into this restaurant and we really had no idea what it served and the menu is all in Japanese so we didn't really know what we were doing with and no photos on the menu either. So um, the, the guy here, he spoke a little bit of English but just a few words and so we ordered, we know they served yakitori which is the grilled chicken on the skewer and then Dwight and I, we ordered sashimi, um, thinking we were going to get a plate also of raw fish. But little did we know, as soon as the sashimi has arrived, we have figured out that this is an all-chicken restaurant. So it is chicken sashimi, which I have never had before, and I, I'm, I can't wait to try it. Oh, man. <laughs> Check out this plate. It looks like a cross between an oyster shell and like a, but definitely that is pretty obviously a chicken head there. <laughs> Honoring the chicken. And just look at this. There's, there's different pieces of chicken all like, all like different um, cookednesses. And I think that's gizzard, but this right here is just like a flower of purely raw chicken breast. Chicken sashimi. I think I think if I'm gonna go big, I gotta go with that purely raw chicken sashimi first. Let's do it, dude. Right, let's do it, dude. This is just oh man. Wow. And I think I'll go with this. I'll go with this sauce. It's not as tender as I thought it was going to be. It makes it extra chewy. It's, it's a little, little chewy. chewy. It's a little chewy. I was thinking it was going to be kind of melt in your mouth tender. It's not quite tender, but it sort of is chewy actually. And it definitely tastes like raw chicken. But it doesn't have like a, not like a, a stinky raw chicken taste. It's very like pure tasting. But yeah, that's definitely interesting. I think I'll go for a piece of the half, the half cooked this time. Some of this ginger and wasabi. And then I think this is sesame oil. Mm. Oh. I think maybe just partly cooked gives it makes it more tender and you just have kind of that raw soft like gooey inside but then the outside is cooked okay and then got to try that gizzard wow what a what a first meal in Osaka yeah this gizzard is gonna need some serious sauce I think <laughs> wow, can you chew it? That is like very like crispy. Oh, that one is awesome. Oh, that's, I think that's chicken, um, chicken thigh with leek. Oh, that's good. In that, in that sesame and salt, we finished off all of that sashimi, chicken sashimi, and those yakitori skewers. This is my last tiny little bite of what might be the best thing here, which is the grilled skewers of liver. <laughs> Yeah, the liver is unbelievable. It's, it's by, by all means the creamiest liver I've ever tasted. You know, some liver is kind of dry and crumbly. This liver actually like, literally like, like turns to liquid in your mouth as you're eating it. It's so creamy. Wow. We just finished and that was quite a memorable first meal in Osaka at 3 a.m. Uh, that was... The, the sashimi was definitely interesting, but I really liked the half-cooked chicken pieces. The full raw chicken breast was a little bit on the chewy side, not so like melt-in-your-mouth tender, but the half-cooked pieces were fantastic, and all the yakitori was really good. But that goes down as truly one of the most memorable meals right off the plane that I've ever had. As I was vlogging, Dwight, Stepped into the next restaurant down the alley. I think he wants to eat again. It's the white BKK fatty here. 
we stepped into the next restaurant and again the menu is all in Japanese so I'm not sure exactly what we ordered but we just kind of oh oh tofu is here oh look at that look at that tofu yeah so we just kind of ordered a couple things as best we could and we'll see what comes out Wait, is that good or oh pour some pour some of that pour some of that soy sauce on my bite if you if you would oh thank you mm. oh that's very cold it's almost like watery cheese but yeah kind of like kind of a little bit crumbly not the silky tofu a little bit crumbly okay, here is the plate of fried chicken that looks good and fresh. Oh, it's so juicy and ridiculously hot. Oh, oh, just come see how juicy this is. And this has just emerged from the kitchen. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it looks almost like pieces of fried chicken, but then stir fried with oyster sauce and some small vegetables. That is quite a large bite, but I think I can get it all in one bite. Oh, that's hot. Mm. That tastes like fried chicken. Yeah, then stir fried with sauce. Yakisoba. She just brought us a plate of yakisoba and topped it with bonito flakes, which are, um, I think they're some kind of tuna, like dried tuna flakes, and they are just wiggling around. I guess that's the reaction from the hot steam of the, the yak fried noodles, and then those dry little, very paper thin flakes. And with that steam, they're just wiggling around. They really look like worms. They have a really good, fresh, smoky flavor to them. And yeah, that's just a kind of like a, almost like a burnt soy sauce flavor to them. That is awesome way to end the meal. We just finished the next meal that was delicious as well and all of them, the owner of the restaurant and his wife I think, they were extremely nice. It's almost 4 a.m. and I think that is about good for the first night in Osaka. Dwight booked a place on Airbnb uh, which is kind of like you can book people's homes or people's private residences. They put them up for rent so we are gonna crash at his place that he already has. Ikea there, too. It might be Ikea there. Ikea beds can be okay. But maybe not Ikea. Oh! 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 Well, that thing is hard cut. I didn't press anything! I was about to press it. We made it to Dwight's place, and it is very small, but very, like, homely and cozy. It's just after 4 a.m. We made it back to the house now, but that was an amazing introduction to Osaka. It was definitely on my list to eat chicken sashimi, but I just didn't know we were gonna have it tonight. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's I'm gonna end the vlog for today here. I want to say a big thank you for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment below, and we'll see you all tomorrow for day two in Osaka.